Hello lovely people, it's Hila here at Saturday Night Station. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today is a sew along video showing you how to put together this dindle dress from a Berta magazine and it also includes a lot of top tips for sewing with Berta sewing patterns as well as how to actually put the lining, a full lining on a boned bodiced dress which I hope you will enjoy. I had so much fun sewing this dress up and I love wearing this dress. I have worn it out to the theater and every time I wear it I do get tons of compliments so sit back relax grab your tea watch through the end before you attempt to sew this because some things look like they don't make sense until they do make sense because I kind of sew in a slightly non-traditional way but just so if you wanted to see the full dress in action uh, there we go and while you're at it, please do remember to like and subscribe. It really supports the channel and I appreciate that. All right, let's get into it. And by the way, if you landed on this video just to find out how to uh, do the boning, just go on to this timestamp over here. Okay, so we're actually using Berta 92014, which is an older issue, one of my favorite issues. And this is the actual dress that we are going to be making. It comes in several variations. That makes it a banging pattern. It's dress number 129. And as you can see there, that is the line drawing for it. I have already traced out my pattern pieces and the idea is that you have already traced them out. And I have decided to add on the seam allowances because I do have some floral designs that I want to pattern match and this is the boning that I'm going to be using. I'm based in the United Kingdom and I got this boning from William G and they're an online haberdashers. I will put the link in the description box down below. This is the fabric that I will be using which I got from Minerva.com and it's a lovely denim with an embroidered selvage. So I've had it hanging, it's been pre-washed the skirt pattern pieces are actually dindles that you have to draft it yourself then you need to cut two no you actually need to cut four of those but i did them on the fold and you also need a draft it yourself pattern piece cut on the bias that's going to go over the top of the bodice heads up i did discard that idea and here we have the embroidered denim in all its lovely glory you can see that the design is on the selvage edge I will be cutting the lining pieces on the plain section of the fabric as you can see there. Top tip for your pattern pieces, right? With the side back pattern pieces, because they do look relatively similar, you want to make sure that you write bottom at the bottom so that you don't get mixed up. So what I decided was that I was going to make the bodice with this bottom selvage edge here. And then the skirt is going to be the plain thing. So that's going to be the main fabric. And then this is going to be the lining on the inside. So I've checked this. I've pinned it together to see if it's going to create an effect that I like. And I think I quite like this effect. Here's another top tip for when you're tracing out further patterns. Make sure you write these numbers here. These tell you which seam to attach to so this is seam number two on uh, back and this is seam number two on side back so you know where to attach it if you're not familiar with it it's a top tip another top tip has to do with pattern pieces that are cut on the fold you always want to make sure that you notch your center front or your center back both sides you want to make sure that you notch it it's always very useful to be able to know where that is okay so these are my front pattern pieces these are the bodice pattern pieces these are the lining pattern pieces and so now i need to do some interfacing so I'm going to be adding pockets to the pattern because uh, pockets are everything and there's no reason why I can't have functional pockets because it's a dindle skirt. The pockets are not going to interfere with the design lines at all. So I have a standard template here that I use for the side seam pocket and I'm just going to cut out uh, four of these uh, before I move on any further. The key thing about a pocket pattern piece is I need, I need to make sure that it's quite roomy and it's got space for my hand to hang out in. 
And so for the length, we're going to do, I've decided that this is where my hem is going to be because I want to have the strong flowers to be at the bottom. And so I'm measuring it up and I'm doing 72 centimeter. So I'm just going to measure it all the way going down. I've folded it over now so that it's 102 centimeters wide and it goes up and if you can see there's that line there that I'm now just going to cut across so I have clipped all of these points here where I want my hem to go along and again so top tip you're gonna want to fold it over in half after you've cut it and make sure you notch your center fronts and your center back over here and whilst I have my skirt pieces laid out nice and flat like this I'm going to notch where the pocket pieces are going to go so for me the sweet spot is about two inches from the waist so I'm just going to notch here so that when it comes to sewing I'm just going to attach them over there here we go. Notch that. So that's done. Before I continue, I'm just going to check that I'm happy with the proportions of the floral bit at the top and the floral bit at the bottom with the idea that I can take off a bit more from the top if I want to. And I think I'm sort of happy with it. That looks all right. And I'm really happy with the pinks flowers being the main uh, liner at the bottom okay so for the lining we're going to do the front the two side fronts we're going to do the back and we're going to do the two side backs i'm using a black medium weight interfacing that i'm going to use to interface the lining following the instructions of your interfacing go ahead and do the interfacing so I put mine underneath there don't do this where you put it on the wrong side it's a good point of stopping now I've interfaced all of the pattern pieces and I'm going to leave them to condition now so to give you context uninterfaced fabric interfaced and I'm interfaced the lining okay now that this has conditioned we're now going to sew all the lining pieces together and all of the bodice pieces together and this is what this is going to look like so we're going to be sewing that onto there and this onto here and these are the main fabric pieces over here so that's the lining and this is the main one this is the main one and that's the lining so we're just going to go and we're going to sew them down this is what the lined bodice piece is going to look like this is the interfaced one so you can see the shaping on there for the bust you can't see it so much on the main fabric piece because it is not interfaced but it is beginning to look gorgeous at this point you want to make a note that this is your left side and i would take a friction pen and actually write L S on it just so that you know that's the left side because you're gonna sew up the right side that's the side that's gonna get sewn up and the zipper is going to go onto the left side if you're right-handed like me to give you context this is the lining and this is the front and that's where the zipper is going to go here okay so you're gonna sew on these over onto there and so this is what we're going to have. This is the left side where the zipper is going to go. So we're going to sew down this right seam over here. And the zipper will be installed on this side. And so it's the same with this section here. You may then want to check at this point if it will fit. So at this point, you've got that's the lining and then that's the front over there. So now we're going to go and press the seams open. For this piece, we're going to press the seams open like this. OK, 
looking so that they look really nice on this side for the lining right we're going to press them inside like this and then like that and then like that because this is where we're going to be channeling through the boning so not pressing them open no 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 pressing them like that okay so this is what this is going to look like just like that then we have that over here and here we've got the shaping okay now we're going to move on to the skirt piece because uh, we're going to finish the skirt before we connect it to the thing before we do the boning and i'll explain why so we're going to do the pockets to add to the skirts first so first of all we're going to finish we're going to serge the curved edge okay so these have now been surged around the edge the next thing is we're going to reinforce the skirt portion where um, the pocket is going to go onto so okay remember we've notched here and that's where uh, hang on. okay we're just going to pretend that this is like this but it's not actually going to be like this okay going to do this but this bit here where the pocket opening is going to be we're going to reinforce it with some fusible stay tape right and that's because this fabric has got a little bit of a stretch on here and we're just going to reinforce it so we measure this how much do we need here just this much and we're going to cut that and then we'll press it on okay so I've got four of these now okay now we we'll interface will fuse them onto the wrong side of the skirt okay. so you can see there we've reinforced it and we've reinforced it we're going to put in the pocket piece so I'm going to start off over here and I'm going to do that and that will get clipped on there and then this one Done over there. Okay, and then we're just going to sew those on. Once this is sewn on, we're now going to overlock all of the edges before we then press it over onto this side. With your skirt, the other thing that you're going to do is you're going to mark the left side where the zip is going to go. Okay, so that's the left side. And over here is the right side. And this right side, we're going to sew it all the way down. Okay, so once you've sewn that, you're going to press your pocket to the front because this is the front. And this is the back and you're just going to snip into this so that you can press it open like this but this is going to go this way okay. so this is what it's going to look like pressed open there everything is all nicely seamed in okay and there we go put a pocket in there Okay, so we now have a long pattern uh, skirt pattern piece there with the pocket okay so that's it with the thing it added on and now we're gonna have to gather that whole skirt to fit the bodice coming along beautifully 
So my gathering stitches, I'm going to start them about five eighths of an inch over here because the zipper is going to go over there so I don't want my gathering stitches to start right there. Now the gathering stitches are there on the skirt and I now have to do the gathering and try and get it to fit around um, the waist seam of the bodice. So it's a bit of an art form but you get there. So to help you to get even gathers you're going to clip this is the side seam yeah and this is the center back remember the notch that we made for the center back and this is the notch for the center back on the skirt so we can line them up and then this is the side seam the right side seam and the right side seam and then we've got this is the center front notch and that's the center front and then we've got the other side so now when I'm gathering I'm going to be able to evenly gather this and evenly gather that so that's why it's really important to mark those center back and center front notches if you have to do any gathering it will help you to make sure that everything is gathered evenly okay so there we go I've now supplemented the gathering by in there and then I'm gonna go in and stitch it out we're now getting to the point where you can get a good idea of what the dress is going to look like aesthetically and at this point it might be a good idea to again just pick it up and try it out and uh, get an idea of whether the gathering is as how you want it to be and it's always so exciting when you get to this point i always get giddy at this point myself okay. so now that it's been sewn up and i've overlocked it I'm going to press and pressing this seam, pressing it up. So I'm going to press these gathers all the way up. And then once we're here, we're going to reinforce this left seam where the zipper is going to be sewn in again by using the stay tape. And then we're going to sew it in. Uh, we're going to press it in on both sides. Okay, the other area that I'm going to reinforce as well is along here so that it doesn't uh, stretch out so we're also going to reinforce it i just want to point out that you need some hanging ties that need to go onto the side seam here so i'm just going to take this apart and then i'll sew it in the other one is going to have to go over here when you put on the zipper but for now we're going to put the hanging ties in but that's an optional so remember that this is actually the inside of the dress so that's been added in and this one is going to go just on here and that's where you'll be able to hang up your dress the other thing that i will get now is i'm going to sew in my label i'm just going to use this as a notch to mark it for me and i'm just going to sew it down that done now next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the lining for the lining i'm using this 100 percent bemberg and it's white and it's a really beautiful lustrous fabric and i'm just going to cut out a dindle So we've done the gathering and we've fitted it to the bodice lining, right sides together. And so we're just going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew that up. So as you can see, that's the lining. And this is the inside. So that's what that looks like. I'm going to press it up. So we're going to press it up. Okay, so now we have a lining over here and we have the main dress over there. Okay. So now we've finally gotten to the point where we're going to be sewing the boning to the lining. Okay, so we're going to be sewing it along here and here in the side seam, along here and along here. Okay, so we're going to mark the seam 
allowance on here. Then I ended up using Taylor's chalk and that's where I want my boning to end. Okay, so the benefit of actually doing it like this, I do apologize because it is upside down, is that you're able to really get your boning right here into the seam allowance. For sewing the boning, I like to make sure that I've got some pieces of fabric that I can put at the end of the boning. And for me, this is an interfaced cupro piece, which I will fold over to go on the edges. And you want to do this because the plastic, I'm using plastic boning, it's got these sharp edges that will eventually over time tear through your textiles unless you protect them. So on the bottom part of the seam, we've got the seam allowances already protecting itself because it's doubled over. So the bottom bit is fine. The top bit is the one that you're going to be um, wrapping over. So I'm going really, really slowly with this one just to show you um, how this works. So you want want to really butt the bottom of your boning right up against that seam and you will start sewing within the ridges of this and as you can see there if you just take your time you will be able to go very neatly within the tiny little holes that are within the plastic um, boning so this one is a boning that you actually sew in and I got this from William G here in the United Kingdom. So again, just taking your time with it and those seam allowances, this is why we didn't trim them away because they are also providing the reinforcement that the boning needs in order to look a little bit more natural and less um, less obvious, less ridgy because that double fold fabric of the seam allowance just softens the look a little bit. As you're getting to your seam line where you're going to attach the lining and the bodice, you're going to want to then stop with your needle in the down position and cut the boning exactly in line with your Taylor's chalk or your friction point, whichever you use. I used Taylor's chalk because it's black interfacing. My friction pens were not visible, so it was a ta good old fashioned Taylor's chalk. So it is plastic, this wriggling, and technically speaking, I should not be using those dressmaker scissors, <laughs> but you want to use any other pair of scissors for that. And then you're going to take your piece of paper. It can be anything as thick as a cotton drill or gabardine or anything that's interfaced, but not so thick that it's going to cause um, an obvious bump because you are going to have to sew a seam on there but I find that these uh, bits of interfaced cupro lining which I don't tend to throw out they do come in handy for this sort of thing so you place it over the edge of it just to protect your textile and then very slowly finish the sewing um, around the boning itself so you actually have to go right to the end stop and turn and then go down um, the other side but if you take your time with it it is so much easier than it seems and also do a practice run on just any scrap pieces of paper it does look a little bit scary because you kind of think how does my needle go through this but it does um, trust me it does and by the time you do your second or third piece of boning you're just going to be like oh my days this is so so easy um, another key thing to remember is that because when you're sewing your boning in, you're actually sewing on this, not the fashion side. So you really have to take your time to make sure that you're pulling apart that seam to make sure that you aren't having any um, tucks. And also if you have a skirt at the bottom, don't make the mistake that I made here, which was to go over it accidentally. So I had to fix that. This is what it will look like. This one has been pressed, so I'm just going to go ahead and press these ones so that they will lose their curls. So on the inside, this is what this looks like. Okay. 
So now that the boning has been pressed straight on the lining, the lining is now ready. So we're just going to put the lining aside and we're going to bring back the main uh, fabric and we're going to sew in our zipper. So we're going to sew the zipper in, remembering to leave that center over there. So I have here the zipper hand sewn in, hand basted in, and then I'm just going to try it before I then go on and sew it up. So don't worry about this. So we're going to finish this off so that this goes like that. So this is what it actually looks like on the right side and once we sewn it it will get pressed and the pocket is um, down there so in order to deal with the pocket once we've sewn the zipper on you're going to pin and as you can see that's where the zipper seam ends and that's where we're going to start sewing from and then going around the pocket and all the way down so that's been sewn up and now we just need to press it Okay, so now we have uh, to get the lining on here. This is the dress, yeah, and just going to unzip it like so. Then we're going to take the lining, yep, and this is the front, and we're going to line up the seams just like so okay like so and all the way round and then we're going to sew at this point once the bodice, uh, well, once the two parts of the dress have been put together, I'm just checking to make sure that um, I haven't got anything untowardly tucked or sewn improperly because you can imagine this is basically two full dresses that you're sewing together. So there was a lot of fabric around the sewing machine. So even though I took my time, I'm also just going to double check everything before I move on to the next step. So that's what I'm doing where I'm sort of um, putting the lining in and also checking to make sure that I've got those hanging ties at the correct place. And um, it's very exciting once you get to this point, really. It's kind of like, Wee, I really, really want to wear this dress. And for me personally, I have to really slow down when I get close to the end because I get so excited about completing the project um, that I'll end up skipping steps or making a lot of mistakes. The next sewing step that we need to do is to do the understitching, which is whereby we take those seam allowances and we're going to sew them uh, very close, edge stitch them very close to the seam line. And as you can see there, it just creates a really nice finish that favors one side. And in our case, we want to favor the side with the embroidered denim and that just looks really nice. Understitching is one of my favorite um, sewing techniques to use. It just makes something look so beautiful and then the next thing is to press that um, seam that we've just understitched and that's just going to take a while I like to use my tailor's ham for this one because it is a curved seam and I'm just going to take my time with it using um, the steam iron and also using my clapper along the way
Of course, this is another good opportunity to try out the garment to see that everything fits, especially that bodice now that you've attached the lining to it. And now would be the time to make any adjustments if you need to make any adjustments, which I've had to do. I've had to um, take in the seams a little bit to fit over my bust. The next step is to sew the hem. This has got a nice deep hem, which I think is very suitable for the fabric that we are using. And I was using um, the silver edge basically. So with regards to the zip, I basically decided that I was going to do hand sewing. That that was the best way to finish the zip. So I pinned it uh, down. And when I tried it on, I realized that I would need to have a boning uh, section near the zip just to help the zip hold up really nicely and perfectly. So I put that in, uh, first of all, by marking it with the tailor's chalk where I wanted it to go. And it had to go right next to where the zipper was going to go, where I would then finish it by hand. Remember, hand sewing saves a multitude of scenes and it is so very useful. Give everything a final press and you have a lovely contemporary dindle style dress. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial, that you found it useful, entertaining and informative. And if you did, please do smash that like button and also consider subscribing. I love sewing and I put out a lot of sewing content pretty regularly. And until I see you next time, lovely people, I wish you blue skies, health and happiness. And above all else, happy sewing. Take care. Bye.